we're trapped. Oh, 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 For nearly a decade, the internet-born terror known as Slenderman has traumatized millennials with an elaborate mythos and the ever-popular Slender video game. I figured there was no better creature to pit your heroes against than this bespoke spook. This Halloween, we're letting the Dungeon Masters have some fun in our All Monsters series of Pop D&D. Hello everyone and welcome back to Pop D&D, the show where I teach you how to take pop culture characters and turn them into D&D adventurers. I'm Daniel Martinez, and because it's Halloween time, we're not going to be building heroes so much as we're going to be creating monsters for your heroes to run against. Earlier this year, we created a great assortment of characters for you as heroes to run as, but we didn't create anything for your dungeon masters. That's what these few episodes during October are going to be for, and I figured what better creature to create for a web series than one that has found its home on the internet. Yes, of course, I'm speaking of Slenderman. The Slenderman myth dates back to June of 2009, when Something Awful forum users were challenged with creating photoshopped images of paranormal occurrences. Slenderman was the most successful of these creations, and has made its way into several other works of fiction, including a feature film that was released earlier this year. Now the most important tool that you're going to need when creating a monster is the monster manual. There's a great amount of resource in here as far as inspiration or different traits that you may want to try using for a creature of your own. In this case we've used creatures such as the cloaker, the dark mantle, and the shambly mound. Now let's go ahead and start off with our attributes for the slender man. With our heroes, our lowest stat was generally around 8. But, because this is a villain and we want our heroes to go up against it, we're going to increase our modifier. So, in this case, our lowest attribute stat is going to be no less than a 16, and we'll be putting that on strength and constitution. To best match the myth of the Slender Man and the means in which it hunts, we're going to go ahead and put a 17 for Charisma and a 19 for Wisdom. Intelligence and Dexterity are each going to get a whopping 22 attribute score. Now as far as creating a monster, you have to determine what type of monster it is. Is it a fiend? Is it a demon? Is it a dragon? In this case, we decided to go with an aberration. The monster manual refers to aberrations such as mind flayers or beholders or even aboleths as utterly alien beings. Many of them have innate magical abilities that are drawn from the creature's alien mind rather than the forces of the world. Now as far as alignment, Slenderman is going to be chaotic neutral. It can't be bargained with, and it doesn't have any reason to go out and hunt so much as it's going out to hunt. Now Slenderman, much like any legendary villain, is going to have traits, characteristics, and feats that will separate it from any normal villain. In this case, we're going to start out with its resistances. Now we're going to give Slenderman resistance to bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing from non-magical weapons. But there's a way for you to get past that. Another feat that we're going to add for Slenderman is a Zone of Fear. Zone of Fear is going to create a 30-foot radius area around Slenderman, wherever it appears. If a creature begins its turn within 30 feet of Slenderman, it must make a DC 14 wisdom saving throw or become frightened. Now that's just if it begins the turn but doesn't even see Slenderman. If it does see Slenderman, it makes that save at disadvantage. That means you roll twice and take the lower result. Finally, as far as attacking, Slenderman is going to be able to use its tendrils to attack. It's going to do a multi-attack, which means it will use its tendrils three times in a turn. Now when it comes to attacking Slenderman, there's no need to worry about putting armor on it or getting past armor. As a strange aberration, it's going to begin with a natural AC of 18. On top of that, Slenderman is going to have 187 hit points. When it comes to tracking the players within the game, Slenderman has blind sight and tremor sense of up to 120 feet. Within that radius of 120 feet, Slenderman knows exactly where you are unless it's deafened or is not touching the ground. So we've built Slenderman, but how would you play Slenderman? The entire method of going through this character is to scare your players. You want to create creepy effects, whether that's playing in the dark, lighting candles, or just speaking in low tones enough that they can barely hear you. This is my attempt at running ASMR. Your best bet at running Slenderman is to try and split the party. You're going to be able to do that by hiding eight items within your map that are going to be used to defeat Slenderman. I'm speaking, of course, of the eight pages. In the video game Slender, the eight pages, you as a player are traveling in the dark trying to find eight pages hidden throughout a wide map. As you collect them, more mysterious things happen, but it leads you towards the end of the game. You as a dungeon master can use this as an opportunity to try and gather items, whether they be 
relics, or in this case, simply pages about the Slender Man. As you have the characters traverse whatever layer you've created, have them make perception checks, wisdom checks, or any other spot checks that you feel might be a good moment for them to try and spot Slenderman. Slenderman might not even be there in the map, but the whole goal is to try and frighten your characters to steer clear of Slenderman. They may be approaching one of the eight pages. Now is a great chance to have them make a perception check. As in the famous Slender game, as you approach or collect pages, things start to get creepier, things start to get twisted, that's your best chance to strike. Now, as I mentioned before, Slenderman has resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. You can allow the players to get past that if they collect all eight pages. If they collect all eight pages, they're now allowed to deal full damage with non-magical weapons. So there you have it, Slenderman is built and we've created a scenario for you to run to terrify your players. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this, my name is Daniel Martinez and please go back and subscribe and watch all the other episodes of Pop D&D for a lot of inspiration. We've got more episodes coming up as we get closer and closer to Halloween and in fact, leave a comment below if you think you know who we're gonna run for our next episode of Pop D&D Villains Edition. Thanks for watching and as always, Roll initiative.